All right. Hello, everyone. It is Saturday night. Hello. It is time Hello. for the weekly dig. <clears throat> we are back after a few weeks of holiday. So uh, hopefully this works out. We're getting some slightly odd numbers from YouTube. So hopefully we're not too glitchy. Fingers crossed. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, for those not familiar, this is a weekly live stream where we talk about anime old and new. Uh, my name is Brent. These are my fantabulous co-hosts, John. Say hi, John. Hi, John. Come on, all. And Steve. Say hi, Steve. Hola, Steve. How are you guys doing? How was your break? As he burns himself. No. No. <laughs> His break goes up in flame. What? No. No pain. Don't drink malt liquor. That's bad. <laughs> uh, There's not that much malt liquor in this. <laughs> How long do you have to leave a, a, a soda drink for it to become malt liquor? Mm. Nah, mm. nah. <laughs> to the point you don't drink it. Mm. <laughs> Go ahead, Steve. What what, what was your, your break like? Um, it was it was fantabulous in that I got to stay at home mm. because mm -hmm. uh, uh, COVID, uh, the Omicron variant went rampant through my Oof. store. So mm -hmm. it was a thing, but we we got through it. Yeah, we got through it. Fair enough. So. But uh, no, it was nice, uh, you know, actually just, actually it, it was nice in that we ordered out and we got Peking duck. Ooh. And mm. so we sat down with the TV trays, got eating Peking duck and watching um, um, a Muppet's Christmas Carol. Oh man, <laughs> so that's perfect. You can't get any better. <laughs> yeah, awesome. yeah. yeah. I, yeah. that, I, you may have just defined my Christmas tradition moving forward <laughs> man Picking that sounds duck. great Picking duck the Muppets the Christmas yeah Carol. oh what could be more wow. than that mm. i haven't even you? seen Peking duck on a menu and i don't even know how long <laughs> <laughs> like it's been on the level of decades and it was mm. the last time i think i saw it it was had to be ordered 24 hours in advance yep. mm. yeah yeah it's probably on it i just always you know zip right past it to sweet and sour chicken so you know yeah, yeah. I go right for the shark fins. Uh, never mind. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> How about you, John? Terrible. I'm terrible. Um, it was a quiet holiday time. I mean, you know, Christmas came and went. New Year's came and went. Um, work Christmas Eve. Work New Year's Eve. Mm, right. So it's just kind of like, okay, you know, the problem when you get to like you know in the industry like soda shipping mm, is yeah. that you have. Everything runs to the last absolute bloody minute. Yeah, yes, it does. And and you know, so it really, but for getting out a little bit earlier on those two two mm -hmm. holiday eve nights, mm -hmm. um, really nothing to say too much of. This year is going to be really interesting because I think doesn't this year push everything one one day forward? So Christmas mm -hmm. Eve, it's like Saturday. New Year's Eve is Saturday, and Sunday mm -hmm. is the holidays. So it's like Oof. they're gonna run us ragged right straight through uh, Friday night. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right straight through yeah, Friday yeah, night. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so you yeah. know, talk to people, hung out with friends, uh, ate, mm -hmm. ate some more, kept yeah. eating, <laughs> <laughs> um, tried to you know, and it's again Genshin is like such a shot in the oh, side because I'm yeah. trying to get more anime watched, mm -hmm. and it's like <laughs> I finished uh, Fruits of Evolution. I finished. I finished. Um, Oh, geez. A couple of others. I finished Beastars 2 finally. Oh, nice. Wow. Yeah. Um, I adore that show. Mm. I really liked where they went with Beastars 2. I oh. really, I was like, you know, congratulations on who, I was it Netflix did that? Yeah, um, Netflix. Yeah, Netflix and Studio Orange. Yeah. Yeah, I just was like, wow, good job mm -hmm. on that, guys. You, you, yeah. you shot yourselves in the foot canceling uh, Cowboy <laughs> Bebop, but, you know, you did good with Beastars. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and so, and then, you know, like I said, Genshin's like a shot in the side. It's like every day, the time I would watch a bunch more anime, it's like, nope, gotta get you, gotta get you, get you. Get you, get you, get you. <laughs> yeah, they dropped a new region, by the way, um, for those watching this uh, over the, a couple of days ago. So that also is definitely a time sink. Um, oh, new things to explore. So. Yes, I was cranking away on that today. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, yep, yep, yep. Hey, Brent, how about Br you? brought to you by John? Hey, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, if it comes um, out of Silver Springs, Maryland, or out of the Baltimore plant, mm -hmm. yes, it may well be. <laughs> um, quiet. Um, we um, 
I was lucky enough that I was able to take the week between Christmas and New Year's off. Um, nice. Basically, we had a, a, a break in the class at that time, so none mm -hmm. of the students were there. So it's kind of like, well, I could sit on my butt for a week with no, no one else in the office, or I could take the time off. Um, so did that, um, saw the parents, and then did a multi-day nice. trip down to Southwestern Virginia. Yeah. Um, and mm. Yeah, that's the, right. Yeah. Um, Abingdon, Virginia, cute little small town down there. And then um, Brakes Park. Breaks Regional Park, mm. um, which is where is that? Uh, near Abingdon, Virginia. <laughs> so it's, it's Southwest Virginia, um, <laughs> okay. and uh, it has the Grand Canyon of Virginia in it, uh, which is not that big, <laughs> but it's uh, a, a big gorge basically that you drive up and look down into, and there are overlooks, and it's it's very scenic. Um, so got to see that. Is it, is it gorgeous? Um, <laughs> I'm not going to honor that with a response. <laughs> Um, I, I had to. I was, exactly. It was required by exactly. law. Yeah. Um, it was also <laughs> odd because I went on December twenty seventh or twenty eighth, I think, and okay. driving up there, driving to the overlook, I was the literally only vehicle on the road. Nice. I saw no other humans, and getting to the top of sort of a not quite a mountain, but you know, a, a very tall rise, and realizing right. I have no cell phone service. Oh, and nothing goes the, wrong. That's when the big foot comes out uh -huh. of the woods. Oh no, help! Call mm -hmm. me. <laughs> that so, had to have uh, been beautiful, though. Absolutely, yeah. was it absolutely pristine, silent? Yes, except for the sound yes. of your That vehicle. was <laughs> that was the other strange thing is is getting out of the car and just nothing. Um, and you're not high enough up that you're hearing like birds screeching or anything. Obviously, right. animals exist, but it is very, very just like blanket of snow, silent. Nice. Um, yeah. So did that. I was talking Blacksburg. Did some trails there. There's a really nice trail at an old coal mine, uh, where the, uh, you can't obviously go into the mine anymore, but the property has now been converted to all trees. You can walk all around the the coal mine property. Um, so that's really nice. Uh, a lot of trails, uh, and a lot of them are just like literally dirt trails through the woods, like well marked, but you know it's not. You definitely feel like you're out in nature <laughs> very much on those trails. <laughs> That was cool. Um, yeah, and then uh, came back uh, up here and spent some time writing and reading and doing all that kind of stuff, which was nice. lovely. Yeah. Um, I've actually been getting back into manga. So, um, Very fact, good. Um, this was today. Uh, so volumes one through six of Rony Kenshin, um, oh. I got through this morning, basically, and this afternoon. Uh, Brent, um, hold on. Oh, yes. Uh, YouTube, YouTube just like did something, and it just okay. the stream stopped. The stream stopped. It seems to be fine on my end. I'm seeing seven concurrent viewers. It just blanked out on okay. my end. I am uh -oh. still looking uh, here. I'm looking at all of my numbers. I, you will I, double check. I, I still see Where us. Do you okay. Still see us? Okay. It now double check. It, an ad just popped into the middle of us talking. Um. Let me double check. I don't think I turned on ads for this, but maybe I did. Yeah, I don't know. It just um, suddenly whoop, it went out, and then there was some woman talking. Yeah. <laughs> like weird. Monetization is off, but that won't stop YouTube. Obviously. Oh wow! Like, okay, if, if they, see that's weird because yeah. like I'm not getting any of that. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm seeing us. I mean, it's on a delay for me. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, I, I have us on Zoom on one side, then I have the mm -hmm. muted stream on the other, just mm -hmm. to, so I could see mm -hmm. what's right. going on, and it. The YouTube stream just blanked out into okay. a Viz Media ad. Interesting. And then some lady, uh, some lady talking. I'm uh huh. Like, Thanks, YouTube. Appreciate that. Yeah, okay. that was that was kind of weird. Um. So uh, <laughs> sorry, sorry. Okay. I meant to ask. Did you go to the Abington Theater, or at um, least go buy it? I went buy it. Yes. So I I I saw it. Like it wasn't open. At the time, there were no performances okay. at the moment. Is it like some kind of historic building thing? Because yeah. I've heard it on the radio, but I've never mm -hmm. been around it. Yeah, it's, it's a <laughs> lovely building. A lot of Abingdon is the kind of these, these historic, not well, historic buildings in the sense that they're you know early 20th century um, right. kind of stuff. Um, yeah, very very charming, quaint town. Um, mm. And uh, yeah, it was, it was it was lovely. It was clearly a a town where people came to that theater, right? Like yeah. it was you know a, a lot of you know. 
cafes next to that and other things around that, you know, and then outside of right. town, there's like, you know, tractors, um, you know, it's just, yeah, very, <laughs> this is, this is kind of that town. Um, well, I mean, but that's that. honestly the only ad I've ever heard mm, about Abington mm-hmm. ever was like, oh, such and such is going to be at the Abington Theater. And it's mm-hmm. like, okay, uh, I don't know what that is, but okay, cool. <laughs> <laughs> I, keep hearing, I keep hearing them talk about it. I figured it must be neat. They were so, doing a okay. stage, they, they were advertising that they, were, they, were, they had going a stage play of A Christmas Story. Ooh. Which would be, nice. yeah, that'd be fun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that'd be very interesting to watch. <laughs> Um, I wonder if they had a kid actor or if they're all adults. Hmm. Don't know. <laughs> Just a really large adult in children's clothes. So she's <laughs> kind of walking all over the way. Ralphie, <laughs> Ralphie. <laughs> I want a Red Rider BB gun with a compass in the stock. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You're like 42. What the hell is <laughs> um, so, yeah, so, um, reading uh, Kenshin. Um, so, getting nice. back into Kenshin trying to um, hopefully finish it out. I actually have all of Kenshin in, in manga form, but never actually read okay. the whole manga all the way through. So looking forward to doing that nice. at some point. Um, it's interesting going back and reading, you know, the manga adaptation of a, an anime I've already seen. Um, right. So yeah. seeing the differences there and the stuff that they adapted or didn't adapt and just the pacing and so forth. And you can, t- you can very much tell with Kenshin that like Watsuki had plans for, f- for stuff going on, but like a lot of stuff was evolving over the course of the story. So it's funny seeing characters that are like really big uh, in early parts of the story just completely disappear. Um, yeah. like, oh, I just don't care about this anymore. Like, it's not gonna be important in the future. Like these, these other storylines are ramping up. Um, and uh, that, is, that is that plan. Oh, uh, uh, Jay asked, very, very good question. Um, did I win the Anne of Green Gables sell? Um, I did not. There was uh, an auction over the holidays of a bunch of cool stuff. Um, I bid on Anne of Green Gables sell for what was it like? Uh, I think about as it high really as really low. Was, I, yeah, I'm, the number in my head was seventy dollars. That seems high. Um, I th- I want to say it was like forty. Yeah, I think I think you're right. It's more like thirty yeah. or forty dollars. Yeah. Um, yeah, I was gonna say it was not terribly expensive, given yeah. how it's like holy crap. Mm-hmm. That's yeah, how old um, that is. Yeah, it, it sold for like two hundred twenty dollars. <laughs> like that was that <sighs> was the final auction price. So I let that one go. Um, but yeah, in fact, do I have here on the Discord? I'm trying to remember where I actually posted about it. Um, do, 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 do. I know. I know. As soon as we finished, like ogling all of these cells that could possibly be purchased. I turned off that just walking out. <laughs> yeah, that was like, undoubtedly oh, wise. Um, there we go. Is, if anybody's going to have Christmas and food and light and heat, <laughs> <laughs> we're not going to go on, the, go on this site right now. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, 240 for the Green Gable cell. Um, oh. There was a, uh, a cell of Sailor Mars and Sailor Venus from the episode where they're saying goodbye to Chibiusa. That went for $800. Um... <laughs> There's a cell of a god warrior from Nausicaa that went for eighteen hundred dollars. Um, there's a there's a cell of a Ray Ayami's face just kind of looking at you, just the whole face. That was eleven hundred dollars. Um, the big shocker for me is they, they were selling off an Evangelion title card, so it was just you know you know when the name of the episode comes up, it's just a you know a white you know black text on a white background. They were sell- that was a technically a cell like they had to draw that and put it somewhere. Right. That sold for um, three thousand two hundred dollars. Oh! <laughs> for just the you know the text of like episode nineteen, whatever in the title. So all in Japanese. Uh, that's that's kind of surprising. Um, um, I was glad to see though. Um, oddly enough, they had a sell from Sezai San. Uh, the entire family all gathered around, and that went for uh, six fifty. Which I think is a you know I I, okay. I I was afraid that would sell for like twenty dollars because no one would know what it was but no like there are people who know what the Zizan was so that, that's good but um, yep so that is that um, so yeah that was that was pretty much my break I can't think of anything else crazy um, but we are here to talk about some anime that we watched recently we are here to watch it talk about Macross Plus. The legendary yes. anime OVA from the 90s. Um, 
And to be fair, we did watch this last year, so you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's been a while, a long time ago. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, for a little bit of context, Macross Plus um, is only the third or fourth Macross work, um, uh, technically in terms of, of uh, production chronology. Um, Macross came out, um, and then uh, Macross Two came out. And Macross 2 was legendarily divisive. Uh, a lot of uh, otaku did not like that in Japan. And so apparently Shoji Kawamori was like, I'm going to go back and like and make a, a Macross uh, show and show you how it's done. And so he did Macross um, Plus. They were also doing Macross 7 at the same time. Um, which uh, Macross 7 is its own thing. Very much its own thing. <laughs> um, but um, Macross Plus came out and was definitely kind of a, uh, a bit of a shocker um, in the sense of how um, mature it was. Um, that it was definitely aimed at an older audience. Um, and obviously, original Macross was not aimed at little kids, um, but more of a big space opera, you know, big epic broad sort of show. Whereas Macross Plus is, is, a, is quite a bit more, feels like a, a serious Hollywood movie kind of a thing. Um, and they they pulled out all the stops for the animation <laughs> in this one. Oh boy! Um, so uh, yes, yeah, so this was kind of you know. Let me, let me show you what Macross can be aimed at adults, serious, sophisticated, mature storytelling. Um, when you guys watched this, like what what kind of stood out to you as the things that that were kind of unique about Macross Plus, <clears throat> kind of different compared to other anime in general or Macross in general, things like that. Um, <clears throat> I just have to say the the whole opening sequence mm -hmm. of of them, you know, the three of them, you know, yep. running with the you know the the homemade little flying machine and mm -hmm. and them working and launching it and pedals, you know, <laughs> yeah. and and launching it and with the windmills going on behind them, you know, the the like you know the the to generate electricity and whatnot. And just the and the music that was coming through that I, I you know had not remembered that song, and then it was just such a sad sounding song yeah. and going along with the, something that was so happy, mm -hmm. and then you realize that what you're what you're experiencing is is a col a a, a um, collective um, nostalgia between the, yeah. the three of them, a bittersweet memory. It, yeah. yeah. No, really, and 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 the the whole thing for me worked like an A and B, and, mm -hmm. and yes, yes, yeah, and it just went through it, and it's just like, okay, here's your story. There you go, boom, done, <laughs> you know. And uh, I was just like, wow, this is you know. I mean, so when you say pull all, out all the stops, that opening sequence, you're just like, okay, we're not. This ain't gonna be crap, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, it's, it is such a a baller move to start with this thing with no dialogue, um, just music over this very nostalgic scene of, of youth, where you're like, oh, 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 no explosions, no alien yeah. invasion. Interesting. No giant mecha. <laughs> yep. right. Absolutely. And that was what, you know, struck me about about Macross Plus mm -hmm. is like it was it's very light on the mecha even though the mecha mm -hmm. that they're doing is amazingly well done it's not it's not a story of a giant intergalactic space war right yes absolutely right. yeah. you know what I mean so it's like Macross Plus I was kind of expecting <laughs> like and I think I said this when we watched it it's like the first time I I dialed into it the beginning sequences, I was kind of like, ah, um, this is, I, th I thought it was going to be Macross ish. Where's all the mm -hmm. fighting? Mm -hmm. And then it's just like I'd seen snippets later on from the, you know, the entirety of the OVA. And I'm like, I don't, why well, do I don't understand this? <laughs> yeah. why, is there, sure. why is there a person singing and what <laughs> it's going on? I don't understand. <laughs> Test pilots? Mm -hmm. You know, it's only through watching it in its entirety and with you guys where it's like, you know, this is kind of one of those things you'd like to have from the original Macross. Right. The ship yeah. didn't just crash and then, like, <laughs> you know, 15 minutes later, it's a not, it's a new spaceship they've rebuilt. No, there's people doing test piloting. There's people running different programs. They're doing the anti-gravity machines that rip out of the hull famously when the when yeah. the SDF <laughs> off. Yeah. You know what I mean? There are people who are reverse engineering this stuff, and it's like, there is indeed a wealth of stories even before the SDF lifts off Absolutely. Macross Island. 
Mm-hmm. And it's yeah. like, this is kind of, even though you're on a different planet, mm-hmm. you know, at a later point in time, it's still, it's that behind the curtain thing. This is, yeah. these are things that are going on. These are developments that are happening. Mm-hmm. These are how people, human beings and Zentradi together have evolved into a society and how mm-hmm. they're moving forward. I'm like, exactly. oh, okay, I got you. Yep. I understand yep. how this is going now. Yep. That is exactly kind of the, the intent there. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's one of the interesting things is that I think for a lot of folks, um, folks are talking about uh, Macross and, and Gundam in the chat. Um, and Macross Plus is in many ways a very Gundam style OVA. You know, it, it's much more about kind of the, the boots on the ground, technical details yeah, of these right. machines as kind of realistic fighting machines as opposed to aliens pew pew pew, right? And yeah, yeah. I, I'm, I'm not, you know, complaining about Macross, just Macross is a much more space opera y, you know, big thing. Um, and it's just not, never been one of, one of its focus. And so it's kind of neat seeing something that is more in that mold. Um, yeah. Totally. Um, as you also pointed out, so um, <laughs> uh, the anime is, is set at New Edwards Air Force Base, which is a kind of a clue because Edwards Air Force Base is totally a right. real thing. Um, right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so Macross Plus is actually extraordinarily loosely based on a real event. There was a, um, uh, a program at Edwards Air Force Base to choose which of two fighter plane um, prototypes would go into production. Uh, and I think it was around the F-14. Uh, I think the F-14 was one of them. Okay. Um, and uh, apparently as they were kind of researching stuff from Macross Post, they were like, oh, that's a great sort of, uh, you know, backdrop for a story is, is that. So let's, let's use that as inspiration. Um, uh, sadly, they're, they're not, there were very few Zentradi at the actual Edwards Air Force Base. Yes. Um, I know, very, very sad. Um, I call I call racism. Yeah, pretty pretty, pretty much. Um, um, it's also interesting, like just how much this OVA does um, without a lot of dialogue. Um, so, like the the, the scene of the um, the YF twenty one starting up and just seeing uh, Gould, you know, strapped in and seeing like the ship flex and move on its own, mm-hmm. and you're realizing, oh, okay, like there's a whole mental connection thing here. Um, just a lot of really smart, you know, showing, not telling, uh, right. the OVA. Well, when you've got the budget to throw at it, you can't. <laughs> yeah, right. exactly. No joke. Yeah, I mean, totally. I, I love original Macross. I, you know, and, and it's, right. you know, reiteration is a Robotech thing. Mm-hmm. Um, but it was, there were a lot of moments where it was not really on budget with a lot of what they were mm-hmm. showing. Not yep. like this. No, <laughs> exactly. Um, yeah, Mac. I don't know how the folks in original Macross got the budget they did at the time. Yeah. Um, like you know, you look at other anime, like you know, Voltron. Uh, uh, Lion Voltron was same period, yeah. roughly as Macross, about the same year it came out, and you, know, <laughs> you can see the kind of budget you normally got for anime at the time. It's like, whoa. Oh yeah. <laughs> um, but you go back to some of those, you know, those Eternal Circuses and original Macross. It's like, dang, you know, yeah. who is spending all night right. drawing that? Um, yeah, no, um, it, totally. For me, it was really that, that mature, sophisticated storytelling of Macross Plus that really got to me. Um, and to that point, um, fast forwarding a bit, um, so you have this whole, um, um, issue between, uh, these two test pilots, Isamu and Gould. Uh, and then they see this woman named Myung show up, um, um, all of them here at, uh, on New Eden, New Edwards. And um, what's so interesting about this is how um, the restraint the writers have in all of this, where you know there's backstory, you know there's stuff yeah. going on, but nobody sits there and says, well, as you know, Gould, you know, 10 <laughs> years ago. <Yes. laughs> Let me re-explain to you the things that we all know, mm-hmm. but we'll just reiterate right. them because it's fun. <laughs> right? Yeah. Yeah. No. Uh-huh. And and to, it, even further, like everyone's dancing around the issues. Like there, there's clearly <laughs> elephants in the room that people are just refusing yeah. to acknowledge. Yep. Um, um, especially in this 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 you know, legendary scene of them, and it should be noted, like um, so th- this scene where the three of them actually meet is at sunset. Um, it is hard to color anime in this lighting 
right? You have these very harsh shadows. You have this coloration. You're trying to get across where all the characters are. You're trying to get across. You, know, you have to you have to communicate that a lot through body shapes. Um, the fact that you know, big guy here, small woman there, all that kind of stuff to keep, to communicate to the viewer who they're looking at because it's mostly black. It's mostly just dark shapes. Yeah. So, um, and you know, one of the things I love looking at is kind of what an anime is showing it showing you through its, its animation and this is one of those things where like no we're choosing something difficult to do to show you that we can do something difficult um it's just, it's just uh, amazing work um all throughout it and all the kids in the ink and paint department going i hate you yeah exactly I, hate <laughs> <laughs> I just hate you i'm running out of midnight black damn you yeah. just get a sharpie you'll be fine <laughs> <laughs> um yeah, and just you know, all the stuff happening here. It's, it's really impressive. Um, so there's that. Um, and then one of the other interesting things about the OVA to me, and I know, Steve, you want to talk about this, is the, the overall mecha designs. Um, and just yeah. the, the YF-19 versus YF-21 and all that kind of stuff. Um, and how, how distinctive this is. Like, one of the things that, that, that struck out to me is... Macross is famous, as is, as is Gundam and a lot of other, other mecha shows, for its proliferation of designs, uh, yeah. where you've got to show all the different toys. And they show no restraint here. It's just these two mecha. Ooh. Yeah. And you sit there and you watch it and you just go, I want. Yes. Yeah, Both. absolutely. Mm -hmm. Sure. <laughs> can, can I have? Can mm -hmm. I ask? You know? Yeah, it, they, it was... They got me. <laughs> <laughs> Gold uh, ship. I bought that when I saw it. And I was like, oh, yeah, I'll take one of those. And yep. well, actually, I bought both. <laughs> yep. Well, it was it was just um, you know like in the first combat scene, um, mm. you know where where they're yeah. on the, the the asteroid and they're, and they're and it's almost impossible to keep up. Absolutely, with the, yep. with with with, the, with the, how quick they were moving and all mm -hmm. that stuff. And it was just really, I actually really enjoyed that part of it and how quickly it was happening and that we weren't getting a prolonged cockpit scene of hmm. I wonder what his next move will be. It's yeah. just like, no, no, press, 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 bang, bang, mm -hmm. you're dead. Okay, here we go. Mm -hmm. You know, real life, you know, not real life, but, you know, realistically speaking, of like, okay, this is the battlefield. People just die like that. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. It's over. And well, then you move You on. think about shots from like, uh, do you remember love? Where right. you're yeah. in the mm -hmm. cockpit and, and you yeah. see the radar display and you hear that, and you see like little triangles show up and you're just, that's it. Like, yeah. There's yep. no action. It's just focused <laughs> it's on like, that. Mm -hmm. Like, well, you know, they probably already seen you too, and you're going to die in like three seconds. <laughs> <laughs> but it was just so fun to watch, you know, the the the, the changes and going so quickly. Mm -hmm. And one of the things, in, in terms of like the, like technical design, one of the things I really enjoyed a small snippet of scene mm -hmm. that I that I think is going to live with me forever is that when he's getting reamed out by the captain. Mm. after action doing the after action report where he's told he's going to go to new you know to new edwards mm -hmm. and he's standing mm. on and you can see the fleet below yeah where he's standing mm -hmm. and it's just like this clear thing that you can look down and you can almost have a 360 view mm -hmm. and i was just like going oh my god Somebody, somebody sat there at like three AM. Was just going, I have to finish this. You know? <laughs> and it's just beautiful. It's wonderful. Mm -hmm. But then you get when you get to 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 the two test planes, and you know, to what, what you were saying, saying earlier about Gold's ship, where it's just like it's almost like whoa, you know, yeah. just like yeah. thing just living. And it was just like going, oh, I like that. I like the idea of that. <laughs> and, and you know, and then but contrasted with this like semi living thing that's connected to Gold's mind. Mm. You still have the human SAFD, you know, the, the, the fighter plane. Mm -hmm. That that one, which is more, much more, you get the sense of mechanical, pilot driven. Yeah. Not yeah. not a oneness. Mm -hmm. Whereas yeah. both ships is, is a oneness, and you and you. That's when you start seeing, interestingly, faults mm -hmm. in the designs of both. Mm -hmm. You start seeing that a little bit, and then it comes more and more apparent. And then you, of course, you you get the end. In battle and uh <laughs> with uh, apparently unlimited ammo but uh, well yes you know <laughs> um well you can't go pew 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 with no ammo right, right. So, <laughs> um, well and um you know episode one you know I'll, I'll give them credit for for ending it by very much paying off on that um because it is about you know the wife 21 just stalling out 
um, because of the, the neural interface and then Isamu being able to go in and rescue him. Um, but then that immediate reaction of the, the mental system that um, it can just, it can do exactly what Gould wants right in that moment. Like he doesn't have to move anything. Yeah. Um, and you're like, wow, like that is, that is powerful and dangerous, but like, I, I get it. Like I, I understand why somebody would want that in a, in a plane. Right. Um, it's also just so cool because of what they do with this moment. Um, this idea that both of these, you know, very much jet jockeys are, mm -hmm pushing each other the entire time. And so how much of this, you know, from a dramatic perspective, there's this idea of how much of this are they ever going to actually admit to anyone? Um, what layers are going on in terms of, of macho thing um, that they could then be hiding all of these design flaws? And it makes you wonder, like, you know, even in real life, and it's I love how anime will do this. They let you, you think, how much of the design of like actual airplanes are influenced by the pilots just being like, oh, it's fine, right? Like, like how how much of this ego also comes into things? We're like, eh, you know, we'll, we'll take care of that. Uh, they're talking about in uh, with uh, uh, with NASA when they're going to the moon. One of the things they had to like really drill into people is saying, if something goes wrong, tell us. <laughs> <laughs> you know, don't try to handle it on your own. Don't try. Don't say it'll be fine. Like we, we need to know what's going on. Um, we can hold our breath for two days. <laughs> yeah. We're fine. We don't need okay. oxygen. Screw Come that. On. Uh, we'll walk it, home. We, we'll walk home. It's it, it'll be good for us. And yeah, it's the F, the F one hundred five Starfighter. Mm. I think it was. It was a. It was a jet from the. I don't. It was called a Starfighter. I don't remember yeah. what the designation yeah, yeah, yeah. of it. But it's this long, like pencil. Yes. Oh yeah, I remember. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. with yep. stubby ass little wings. Mm -hmm. Had very, very, like, poor combat, like maneuverability. But it was insanely fast. Yeah. Man and, and a missile. Like, I think it, was what they called yes. it. Yes. Yeah. And it's like, and that's the kind of thing where it's like, <laughs> okay, you're evaluating this thing. You're you got to get get it in. I have no doubt a test pilot was like. Okay, I can't really steer. I can't really shoot. <laughs> shoot. But, but this is awesome. I, yeah, I can go yeah. incredibly fast. So how was it? It was the best plane ever. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. Yep. It can, it's got crap for bomb load. It's got crap for <laughs> missiles or guns. This thing goes so fast. It's your system. Thanks. Appreciate that. Exactly. Um, um, yeah, and so that's how we, we end episode one. And then episode two introduces us to Sharon Apple, really. Uh, we've seen a bit of Sharon Apple in episode one. We were introduced to the concept of a virtual idol. But we really start digging into it here. Um, and as we pointed out, this was an early Yoko Kano soundtrack. Um, so good. Yeah. Um, I know she'd done Escaflone before this. Um, I think she'd done another Shoji Kawamori work. I'm not sure off the top of my head. Um, this is definitely a very early um, uh, Yoko Kano soundtrack. And you think of how experimental Sharon Apple is. Um, yeah. You know, all the different genres, all the different styles, just, just the, the, the sonic landscape of this OVA uh, is one of the things that, that sells it for me. It's, again, another impressive element of, like, how they're keying this in mm -hmm. for yeah. an OVA. Yeah. You know what I mean? Right. And not just a single OVA, a four-part OVA. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like... Mm -hmm. Wow. Okay. Yep. Absolutely. If Macross had been a total, total turkey, this never would have happened. Mm -hmm. That's <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, uh, so, yeah. So, um, episode two starts delving into this whole idea of the Virtuoid Idol experience. Uh, and I'll say this is one of those, this was a fairly transformative sequence for me when I watched it. Like, I wanted to go out and learn how to make holograms um, <laughs> after watching this. Uh, it's just so cool, this idea of this sensory concert that's just completely happening all around you and creating all yeah. these visuals and images and time to the music. It's, it's really cool. Uh, and you think this is... It, it, be, it beats Pink Floyd at the Planetarium. Yeah, absolutely. Hands down. <laughs> Hands down. I would imagine there's probably some old school uh, deadheads from Grateful Dead experience mm -hmm. that probably had very much of this experience and had nothing to do with Hollywood. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> very much so. Um, well, it's one of the things that the, 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 the OVA is really dealing with is this idea that, you know, um, that is very much what this 
feels like to the people in the audience, right? Yeah. Um, it is this transformative experience for them um, because it is so overwhelming. Um, and, uh, you know, that I, in, obviously music has always been an important part of Macross, but, you know, keying it in this way where it's not the song that saves the universe. Um, yeah. You know, it, it's this sort of uh, whole um, experience. Yeah. Remember, uh, I'm, I'm blanking on the name of the anime. I think mm. it was one of our, our watches from last year mm. <clears throat> where it was a young girl wanting to join a all-female troupe because she went to this concert thing where she wanted where the where the hologram came at her and she wanted to be an actress for this it oh, was and i cannot okay. feel like yeah, I remember yeah. it and it just now occurs to mm. me i'm just kind of wondering <laughs> if, if that yeah. and that anyway the ghost is like going yeah, my press plus. Let's do this. Yeah. Forget <laughs> the CGI. We can do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, interesting. I I don't remember that off the top of my head, but it is tickling in the back of my head. Yeah. God, I was gonna yeah. say I got Anima Yell in the back of my head somewhere in there, but that, that wasn't it. That was just mm -hmm. I can I can dance, I can do choreography, but I cannot sing. Oh yeah, yeah, that's... that one. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, God, I'm trying yeah. to think of lapis yeah, relights came to mind, but that's mm -hmm. magic and singing. And it's not hologram. Right. Mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, but yeah, and so I just love how this particular episode um, just continues to kind of um, go deeper on the stories of these characters. Um, where now that we have Sharon Apple, now that we have Myung, we're starting to understand. Okay, like there's something broken about these characters it's not just they have past like there there's 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 holes in them that they haven't filled um so to speak and um um and then you you get the first that first sort of hint of what's going on um and i love the, the parallels here and again massive spoilers um we saw in episode one how the um brain control interface, mind, mind machine interface uh, of the YF-21 had the flaw that it would react instantly to exactly what the person wanted. And mm -hmm. now we have with Sharon Apple um, responding to what Myung really wants by yeah. trapping her inside and, uh, and creating. One of, the, one of the things I love, and I, I, I'm sure I won't be able to find a, uh, an exact screenshot of it, but when she's doing this, there's a, a sequence where they show all the circuitry um, and they show like, um, I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna find it, um, but they show different pieces of equipment, oh, that, that's part of it. Um, they show different locks and they show things, um, uh, um, all the doors being locked except one. Um, and it just kind of, a bunch of things go down and one is left lit and you realize that Sharon Apple is leaving a space for Myung. Like, this isn't trying to kill Myung, it's creating right. a dangerous situation for Myung. And you're blinking, you miss it, but I just, I love those little bits. Um, yeah, and then um, uh, Myung gets rescued. Um, um, by Gould, which is not what, what I think a lot of folks would expect. Right. You know, the, the, the hero doesn't get the girl, if you will. Um, it is strongly implied that the two of them have a, uh, uh, a, a night together. Yes. Uh, <laughs> playing, they were playing Pinochle. That's all. Yes, exactly. They were playing Pinochle. Uh -huh. yeah. Indeed. Um, <laughs> something that sounded like that word. Um, and, yes. uh, <laughs> if it was past 10 o'clock, even then. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Um, and then I love how that kind of boils over in the following scene where they're all, you know, going out and, and, and the two of them basically just, you know, uh, just throw the, the you know, throw their stuff down and just go at it with each other. Yeah. Uh, they just start punching and kicking each other. In fact, there's that, that wonderful scene where, where, you know, Google goes over and literally it's almost just like kicking him with his mecha. <laughs> Such a childish, ridiculous move. Um, uh, and then a shot rings out. Yeah. 
And and again, that that kind of bringing the reality to it of oh crap, like they could actually kill each other. Um, and ending the the episode on that is just a great way of of ending an episode. Yeah. Um, well, you get that nice like. Gold looks over and he just sees it. <laughs> yeah. And, and you don't hear any dialogue or like, mm -hmm. I could use this. Mm -hmm. Next thing you just know, you hear the shot. You're just like, oh, crap. <laughs> Dude, really? Yeah. Really? Yep. <laughs> exactly. Explain that this errant. one. Right. Oh, wait, you do. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. That errant thought of like, I just want to kill you. Oops. What happens if you have a machine that can do things that you think? <laughs> like, ah, oh, exactly. damn it. Um, <laughs> And what's interesting here is is exactly that the fact that all you know, um, none of these characters are shonen protagonists, right? right. You, right. you don't have the 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 teenager who runs in where angels here to try to make basically Isamu, but Isamu is also kind of an idiot. Um, <laughs> kind <you know>? of, <laughs> yeah. I know. Um, but you know, Isamu isn't a very likable character in a lot of ways, um, and neither is Gold, and neither is Mio, really. Uh, and it's just fascinating doing a story about these sort of flawed characters, where it's like, yeah, I'll I'll manufacture this experience to uh, to possibly kill this person. It's like, wow, okay. Mm. But I think it's it, it's much like uh, what we enjoyed about Lane, like Professor mm. Airy. Yeah, the man's deep right, yeah. flawed, mm -hmm. and it's like having the perfect super scientist, right? <laughs> That's great, you know. And there, there are certainly plot points that you can have a, you know, the wonderful super scientist give his grandson a robot. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> yep. Because the the grandpa super scientist is important here. Mm -hmm. But you know, these flaws give them, you know, so at least that element of connectability where it's mm -hmm. like, yeah, you know, they're not just these great people doing great things. They're mm -hmm. people with real issues trying to do the best that they can in any given situation. Mm -hmm. Like okay, that gives you an everyman moment where you can yeah. be like, I can, I can see with that. Absolutely. The next time I get in my brain controlled car, I'll have to remember to control right. my emotions. Yeah. <laughs> Soon. Never give me one. <laughs> yeah, I'm not, I'm not, no. I'm gonna stick with old school. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> um, there was a great sketch comedy of uh, of a woman going out to interview um, somebody on the day that jetpacks become available to the general population. Um, and she's interviewing somebody and says, this doesn't seem like it's going very well. And in the back of his eyes, he's always going, ah, 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 ah. you know, just the entire time there are people just, you know, slamming into trees and all that. Cause they're just, you know, mankind uh, is not ready. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> oh dear. Um, but yeah, totally. I mean, this is, that's one of the powers of Macross Plus. This is about, um, mature storytelling. These, these are not. Yeah. Typical uh, kid heroes, um, and the fact that, and again, you, you get these layers um, with the scene is, which, by the way, very Evangelion, uh, with the inquest on uh, on Gould, yeah. you know, very much Sealy uh, operating here, and the whole fact, and again, the fact that part way through they're like, well, we've seen enough, everything seems fine here, go on about your your business, and people are like. Really? <laughs> You're not supposed um, to do it this hey? way. Um, <laughs> the big guy's kind of a psychopath. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. With, a, uh, with a very, very dangerous thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> lunch. Totally. All right. Um, for me. <laughs> um, and the fact that, like, you know, nobody says, well, obviously, you know, these people are trying to do X, Y, Z. You were just left trying to figure it out as a viewer. Yeah. Good stuff. But I mean, again, you know, it's the, the deep think on this where mm -hmm. there are other factors involved in the background that mm -hmm. now we're kind of clued into be like wow shouldn't he like get trouble get thrown in jail in the brig or mm -hmm. something it's like nope we now have a very clear message that's like no there's other things on the table mm -hmm. with this whole entire program and each of these people with the inquest is a is a key actor in what's going on yep so this is just this is peanuts. <laughs> yeah. This yeah. does not matter. Mm -hmm. The mm -hmm. attempted at homicide, maybe. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It doesn't matter. There's much bigger fish to fry in this situation. It's mm -hmm. like, that's a wonderful hint that, I, you know, I really would like to, if, I'm assuming if this had been like a 12 episode or 24 or yeah. more, that we could have gotten a little more meat in mm -hmm. that to be mm -hmm. like, okay, 
Now we're behind the curtain on the machinery that's going to go into the big space battle. Mm -hmm. That would be behind the curtain of behind the curtain. Right, yeah, yeah. Right. You know, it'd be like, yeah. okay, well, who are the players mm -hmm. in the technology to get to mm -hmm. the space war? <laughs> like, ooh. It was one of the great things about, about Gundam The Origin, the OVA. Um, is that that was very much that for the Gundam universe is what was going on behind the scenes. Why was Char here? Right. Why was this person here? Right. You know, yeah, absolutely. It's, it's you know, uh, as otaku, we love all this stuff. Give us all the world building. <laughs> well, just, just it fleshes things out so nicely mm -hmm. that then when it's done well, now you, yeah, yeah, you, mm, have, sure, you yeah. know, mm. you could screw that up terribly. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but when you do it well that those people who follow it are like, oh my God, I, yes, mm -hmm. I actually, I understand the position that you're coming from now. That yep. makes the story much richer. Mm -hmm. I'm like, ooh. Exactly. Yep, 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 yep. I just um, have to say it. I, I think it was Gendo all along. Ah, uh, yes. It was I'm, Gendo. It's, it's always that. Gendo. Gendo, um, yeah. I think Shinji was the actual mastermind. Well. <laughs> he manipulated everybody into doing his will somehow. You know, but guys. But he hates. But he hates himself. You know. So it's like negative. We spent like six hours, eight hours going through all those Eva films. Yes. <laughs> I, I thought we would have gotten gotten out of our system by that point, but barely oh, not. No. Oh no. <laughs> it never will. It never Infected. will. It's true. That 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 is the curse of Eva. Is it never quite leaves your mind. Oh, I was gonna say today I was I I was listening to. Anime music on the phone, and I'm like, I don't have Cruel Angel's thesis. I'm like, oh, God, oh no. yeah, <laughs> <laughs> no! you're like, not no! a true otaku. I'm not. So that's yeah, it's, it's in there. The worm is in there. Exactly. Oh. Um, it should also point out. I just realized, um, or just discovered, um, Macross Plus actually came out a year before Evangelion. Oh, yeah. Wow. So Macross Plus yeah. was '94. Evangelion was '95. So any wow. comparisons we see in this is actually original to Macross Plus. So. Good for that. Nice. Um, yeah, I, I agree, Jay. I'm curious how much Midnight Black paint for Macross Plus because there's a lot of it. There's a lot of dark shadows <laughs> in this, this OVA. Um, yeah, totally. Um, uh, let's see here. I'm trying to figure out what else is kind of of note in episode three as we could, you could kind of build up more um, the stuff between the various characters. Um, but it, it's very much um, build up to the the end and this is again one of those those interesting choices of, of, of this is that it's like well no actually we're all you know it's all kind of over we're all going to go to earth now um because it can be a big yeah. concert um around the sdf1 and like every background fan is like excuse me we, we ooh, we're, 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 yeah, we're going yes to please <laughs> we're going to the thing yeah we're going to the thing <laughs> And did we all recall my reaction? Yeah. Exactly. What's that? Like, oh, I see him. What? <laughs> Absolutely. The candy store. Yeah, <laughs> totally. Um, because, um, I mean, it is an iconic thing. Um, and, you know, being able to see uh, the SDF-1 and how Earth has kind of, you know, uh, uh, recovered from everything that went on in, in that. In fact, one of the things I want to check out um, let's see here. Uh, do 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 do. All of the uh, reaction weapons. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, so original Macross took place in two thousand nine. Um, so it's good to know um, that in thirty years, that's all it takes for humanity to build a massive technopolis all around SDF, the SDF-1 <laughs> and completely recover from a global thermonuclear war that decimated the entire, you know, surface of the planet. Um, one of my favorite... Um, well, you know, they you know. did have the Robotech factory they dragged back from, from deep space and planted in orbit around Earth. Yeah. So presumably with mankind's ability to, ret, you know, engineer stuff and figure things out and take things mm -hmm. apart, maybe that... Maybe that was the super science. Yeah, that yeah. No, I, and I, I totally believe that because one of my favorite things about Macross is just the absurdly compressed timelines of everything. Um, <laughs> you know, because I think like ten years after that, there are generational starships going off to other worlds. It's like, okay, we can just build those now. Great. Okay. Cool. Just moving on. <laughs> well, it's at the end of end of Macross, you have like, oh yes, you know, the SDF two was destroyed. Mm -hmm. 
and the SDF three is is mm -hmm. only in part construction in orbit. Mm -hmm. It's like, wait a minute, there's a two? Yeah. What what the hell I, is I, two? Where I, was that? I think that's Robotech though, right? That's not Macross. Well, I, th I thought at the end of Macross they they discussed that that they had they were trying to build ships. Robotech did the same thing, but it was the the same idea where it's mm -hmm. like they had to build to get out to the Zentradi, to get out and away from Earth and yeah, establish the defensive line. I, I thought that was only Robotech plotline. Um, oh, I thought that was, I thought it was yeah, Macross. Yeah, I, I may be wrong. At the again. very last episode. Yeah, yeah. I'm, um, but it's been a while, so I'm not sure. Um, it has been a while for me, too. <laughs> yeah, exactly. um, um, but uh, yes, and so you have the you know, fairly Hollywood plotline of Osama deciding to go off to sabotage the uh the concert and the release of the phantom fighter um, um as we have just kind of this whole build up to the climax and kind of who all the um uh, the actual bad guy is um uh, which is a nice reveal um uh let's see here um and then we move on to episode four which is basically was it, was it the actual bad guy uh, Spike's voice from yes, yes. was yep. that what you were saying mm -hmm. yeah. that is very Steve much Bloom. Steve Bloom um, as a villain it was a very interesting fate in this in this storyline which I don't really understand I yeah. mean I accepted it but I was just like really mm -hmm. yeah yeah that's um, our choice objective. that's our choice <laughs> that's our choice yeah okay. yeah um, okay I I honestly think the reason is and so basically he just he just falls off a platform to his death. I honestly think they forgot. Like, I think they wrote all this stuff and then they realized, oh, wait, what happens to him? Like, we, we never actually wrote his death into the storyline. And so they kind of went back and said, well, we'll just have a scene where he, like, falls down and we'll move, move on. <laughs> I don't know. Um, oh, it, it, it was so random. The concert. <laughs> right, yeah, pretty much. It, 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 it was so random because it's just like, going, okay, here he is doing this massive machinations behind mm -hmm. the, the, the scenes, his own. And then it comes to fruition, and he's happy, and there's all this stuff, and then he just jumps. Yeah, I'm like, okay, oh, oh, are we sacrificing ourselves? <laughs> what, what? Yeah. Okay. Maybe he thought Sharon was going to catch him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he Boy, did he misjudge death. that? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, I I took it at the time that he was just off his rocker. That just he was yeah. gone, you know. Um, but but I agree that looking back, it's kind of like a hmm. Doesn't make sense. Um, but yeah, we Come have on, people. We got to wrap this up. Come on, every yeah, character. Exactly. Like, yeah. Wrap it up right now. He's um, dead. She's dead. They're dead. Everyone's yeah. dead. <laughs> Damn. Well, speaking of which, this is also where the the fight between Osamu and, and Ghoul reaches fever pitch as they just kind of <laughs> destroy everything yeah. around us. Yeah. Yep. Oh, um, 30 years you just of imagine if you're yeah, exactly <laughs> right. Well, you, you know, you're, you're you're in one of those buildings. You know, you've recovered from thermonuclear war, and it's all everything's happening, and all this stuff, and you have to look out the window. Oh, look at the fireplace! I do it, and then there's your death. <laughs> yeah, right. You know, yeah, it's just like a missile. Wait, what? Oh god. <laughs> Do you want um, the spaghetti pill for dinner or the the mm. beef bourguignon pill for dinner? Is that a missile? <laughs> <laughs> and we'll be having that for dinner. I do think this is sort of Macross Plus's, um, um, not apology to, but it it's just kind of reference to that sort of absurd space opera epic, you know, tone. I mean, it was glorious. I enjoyed it, it. It's glorious and ridiculous, and you do have like, these giant epic you know destructive sequences i think this is kind of yeah. that we're like okay we got to do this at some point we're going to do it here um it doesn't really fit the tone of what we've been doing up, up to this point but it's fun who cares why not it's anime we're going to um, throw the kids a biscuit they'll be fine they'll right be um um and then um and then we have the big reveal about what actually happened uh low those many years ago um, and I want to address something because um, there's been some controversy lately about Macross Plus um, and the the sexual assault scene um, uh, here uh, with Myung in the past. And I don't think that's what that is. Um, when you see that sequence, and I don't think I'll be able to find a a shot of it. I'll I can get I can get uh, Young Gould. Um, all we see 
is Isamu and Myung together. Gould comes in, sees what's going on, grabs Myung, throws her to one side, rips her shirt, and then looks up and sees himself. I think that's a scene of violence, not sexual assault. I yeah, think. Yeah, I would. I would tend. I would agree because. Um, how do I explain this? Mm. So when when the assault happens, when he walks into to the thing, he sees he sees what's going on, and believe it or not, I actually interpreted that as her going to Isamu and saying, I'm having problems with gold. Yes. And I think that that's, that, that's yeah. that, I don't think there was anything going on between the two. Yeah. Maybe if I wanted to, sure. maybe, but yep. I don't think that that's what was happening. Yep. Mm -hmm. That's the feeling I got from it. Yep. Then gold comes in and like you say, he, he throws her down and it's, I think it's more along the lines of just blind rage. Yeah. And it's a problem that he has, which is mm -hmm. his anger. And yep. you, right. you know, just like this, it's the trope, you know, I'm an mm -hmm. angry yep. person. Mm -hmm. And so I did the thing, and I'm just like, "How dare you? Why would you do this? Why would you be a, you know, a whatever with this guy and rip rip her shirt open and then just stop? Yeah, you know, because it there there is no intent of sex. Yeah, it it it, it, feel, it felt like domestic yeah. assault, no question. Yeah, yeah, um, but not. And well, and I think it certainly plays into the fact that you know he's Zentradi, or at least he's Zentradi mm -hmm. bloodline. Yeah, mm -hmm. so it's like right. it features into. Yeah. At least by watching it, not so much a sexual assault as in here you have somebody who is, you know, eons of genetic manipulation mm -hmm. to be the ultimate fighting machine yep. trying, like the Macross, you know, saga mm -hmm. had laid out, trying to like wind down into yeah. a domestic civilian kind of existence. Mm -hmm. And here you have him unglued. Yep. Like mm -hmm. he thought he understood the relationship with Mun and is, is, Isamu is like it's like that does not compute. Yeah, and <laughs> right. this is a blind mm -hmm. like I'm yeah. a Zentradi. Damn it, I take what's mine. Yep. moment, and it's not a, not a sexual assault. It is a complete domestic battery. Absolutely, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah absolutely. Um, um, I mean, it's still horrifying and oh, terrible. No question. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Uh, and clearly meant to be. Um, yeah, um, and I think it, it also ties into the. Um, uh, the problem of, of deculture of the, the, you know, he's not processing, you know, um, normal human relational interactions the right. way a human would. He's seeing, you know, Oh, you know, you're supposed to love me forever. That's the way love works. Right. And it's just that, that, that thing. Um, and the other evidence of that too, is that, and obviously I'm, I'm no expert, but it seems odd that they would write her then sleeping with him later on if right. that had been a, a sexual assault experience in the past right. it seemed like it would have yeah. been a very clear like uh, uncomfortable on this um but um yeah it's, it's, it's interesting how they kind of approach that and how that just kind of plays out as this this and i completely agree i think it's his it's his rage showing yeah. up uh, more than anything else which for the technology of 30 years to get you know the technopolis mm -hmm. that's around the sdf mm -hmm. You still, you know, I said eons of Zentradi existence mm -hmm. was cloning. Yep. You know I mean, like the whole series, they didn't have any kind of like civilian love culture and yep. having children and having, you know, that kind of society. So it's yep. like 30 years later, Gold is still like very tall person. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, they've mm -hmm. dialed yeah. down mm -hmm. at least to get Zentradi more, at, you know, more along the similar size as human beings. Mm -hmm. But. Right. 30 years is not enough time to dial in like, okay, this is how we live in a civil society. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, um, uh, According to the wiki, he is explicitly a Zentradi human hybrid. Good. Um, which is kind of interesting too, that whole idea of, you know, um, how much does, how much runs in the blood, so to speak, I guess. Yeah. They're exploring as well. Because um, obviously this is also, you know, a, a plot line around like racism. Right and right. you know and how people are seen versus about their 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 past. Um, well, I, I always like the way that they they you know hijacked Army of the Southern Cross to make Dana Sterling mm. um, the child of right. Quadrano Lita, Miria, <laughs> yeah. and uh, Milia and mm. uh, Max Sterling. 
Mm-hmm. And it's like she's a blonde haired blue eyed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nothing Zentradi about her. It's no. like, <laughs> not, it was entirely you know, Zentradi woman, and yeah, you're, you're blonde haired blue eyed. Wow, that's an amazing genetic feat there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I, your I guess... father was like green hair. I don't remember what Max's hair color was. I think it, it was green. Blue. I think it was, was it blue. Oh, green? I think it's blue. You're right. It was blue. Blue. Yeah. He was blue, and her hair was green. Her green, green exactly. And they yes. have a they have a daughter who's blonde. Come on. <laughs> like, wow. <laughs> Did you guys go to the the Zentradi lab and just like mix the kid up in a feature day? Be like, yeah, let's add that. Throw some of that in there. It's almost like that wasn't the original plot. Yeah. Oh my. <laughs> like they 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 hijacked another show. Almost. Almost. Very um, but you know, so you. Mm. At least you do have the love plot line that does occur in original Macross with, yeah. with Max and, mm-hmm. and Maria. So, yeah. you know, gold being the result of that, mm-hmm. entirely likely. Yeah. I mean, well, and, you know, it, it, it's obviously it's 30 years later, so it's probably somebody else. But, yeah. Um, uh, oh, yeah, no, yeah. I'm not suggesting yeah. them, but it's like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. if that happened for those two, sure. I have undoubtedly, you know, mm-hmm. once you got micronized enough centrality that they would yeah. fit in. As long as they were genetically capable of yep. reproduction. So. And then you get Macross Frontier and how micronization works in that. And oh, that's a whole other whole other side of things. Um, well, did they try to explain it? Oh, no, no. There is a serious Zentradi lady warrior who, whenever she micronizes, becomes basically Klee from Genshin Impact. She becomes this, like, really cutesy, like, little girl. <laughs> Whenever she micronizes, and like there's there's some weird flaw with how the micronization works with her DNA, where like she just micronizes more, and she suddenly oh. just oh how oh, dare goodness. you you know it's just it's hilarious. You can tell the writers just like oh. this is ridiculous. This is clearly a plot device. So we're just gonna run with it. Like we're not even gonna try to make sense of this. We're just gonna you know have fun with it. Um, well, that's it's anyway. like what is it the great Jahi. The, mm. the series from this this past mm. season where mm. she loses her soul stone and she goes from being this like you know tough oh. second only to the demon lord mm. to, to like this little tiny girl <laughs> yeah. well, it's like she's in like that that's 10. exactly it yep that's exactly yeah. it. where it's yeah, just yeah. like okay that's that's a thing where it's like oh let's take somebody who's like really badass and, and mm. really like strong and we'll do something silly yes like, oh, that, is, that, is, that is precisely the storyline <laughs> yeah Exactly. Um, and then they and they take that in directions as well because Macross Frontier. Anyway. Um, Still haven't seen that. We'll oh, get there eventually. Yeah. Um, um, that might be okay. <laughs> might be. Okay. <laughs> um, so yeah. So we have our kind of uh, final moment. Um, uh, our our face off between Isamu and um, and there and one actually my favorite moments in this is how is when um, Sharon starts to take over uh, the technology yeah. and she takes over the ship and takes over the YF-19 um, because from a, from a dramatic perspective I really like this idea that you know um, she's thinking over this technology and I'm trying to fast forward because some of these things are in NSFW um, mm. and just nudity um, but when she's taking over the ship in the mines, Isamu has no special mental training to keep him from being mind controlled by Sharon Apple. Yeah. Like from a dramatic right. perspective, that's a really strong draw where it's like, yeah, no, he could totally just be put to sleep by this apparition because that's what it does. Um, and, um, uh, uh, and yeah, I, I love the fact that like, that is a, that is the thing that starts to happen. Like it, it starts taking him over. Um, and it's Myung that, that pulls him out. Um, yeah. and it is, um, and the implication being that it's not just Myung pulling him out. It is Myung telling Sharon Apple, this is not what I want. Right. You know, you've gone off in the wrong direction. This is, <clears throat> this is my actual sort of goal in programming. Um, and that is probably what kind of pulls Sharon back from the brink, um, or at least distracts her long enough for someone right. to then take control again and go in and take on Sharon Apple. Um, and I just realized there's a Genshin Impact storyline that may be very strongly based on this. But anyway, we never stop talking about Genshin Impact now. Of course, yeah. Um, <laughs> All the time. Um, uh, yeah, and so, uh, and so then, and that's our, our, our big climax is sort of, um, and it, it's funny because so much of Macross is the power of love, right? The power of uh, right. that relationship. 
And here it is done in such a much more mature way where it is two characters facing off um, against this obviously very absurd technological sort of MacGuffin, um, but in a way that is them simply saying, you know, this is what I want, this is not what I want. Um, um, and not in, the, in, the, in that sense of, you know, <laughs> I want to be with a guy because he's my guy because I should be with a guy. Um, it's much more about that accretion of feelings and problems and overcoming problems over the course of years and years in a relationship. Um, it just feels more mature, which is awfully nice. And we get to see the SDF-1 taken off. Exactly. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and firing things. Oh. What's, I mean, and mature. And very mature. And very mature, yes. Yeah, yeah. No, no, I mean, let's not, you know, um, forget. I mean, I, I think we can have a, a shot of it. Um, that moment, yeah, there it is, of the SDF-1 with Sharon superimposed on it and all of the tracers going off on yeah. it. That is... <sighs> That is an anime shot. <laughs> yeah. That's the kind of thing where it's like that that can only exist in an anime world and it's burned into my memory forever. My gosh, what an image. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's brilliant. <laughs> very, very brilliant. Um, yeah, and uh, that's Macross Plus. Um, Steve, I know you wanted to talk a little bit about uh, the economy of war, the kind of the whole aspect in this around you know uh yeah. spending and such well it was just so the fun part about about this is that you know like again as we were talking about earlier in mm -hmm. in macross it's just like the thing happened the thing happened and we built the thing and we did the thing and we went off and did the thing yeah here you're talking about we're gonna build a thing but we might build this thing but we need the money for this. Mm -hmm. So where are we going to spend the money? Where how are we going to do this? What is the economics of war? So what so what are we doing here to to make you know? And that's one of the things the great things about this sh this particular show. Actually, John, you were bringing up where it's just like we get to see the little people do the thing. Yeah, yeah. you know that 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 is important. It's not just the little people doing the thing. This is an important mm -hmm. thing yeah. that happens mm -hmm. that we don't talk about in the big space up. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so you and the economy of war is just basically when you realize that it's not only just two egos going at it with their the planes that they've decided to be with, mm -hmm. by the way, it's yeah. not like he, they chose the plane. They, mm -hmm. they just said, well, I'm on this team. So this is my plane. Yeah. And this is what we do. And it's all about a contract. It's about mm -hmm. a design of a company to make this thing to keep the war effort going mm -hmm. or, you know, to, for the defense or, you know, whatever it is. And so all that's playing. So like when you're talking about the, uh, you know, the, the inquest, I mean, gold should have been like put in shackles and thrown <laughs> into the brig and it doesn't happen. And you realize mm -hmm. that, oh, everybody's got a piece of the pie mm -hmm. in this room. Yep. And they understand it. And while they're kind of frightened a little bit about the fact that some of them are just kind of like, can we just not do this now? Yeah. Because it, it, those are the people who don't have the investment mm -hmm. into it. Mm -hmm. yep. And it's kind of fun to watch the guy who's in charge of the base basically saying almost, I don't care which <laughs> one it is. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. I don't care as long as it keeps my base going. Yep. Because his thing is, I cannot do what I do. I cannot keep my economy going if we go to an all self AI weaponry system. Yep. I want pilots. Pilots should be in there because that keeps the money coming to me. Yep. It's all about the money yep. for these guys. And for, for these guys. And then, and, and I know it, the scene where he stands there and the two of them, and he goes, Now I know you're not going to do something so stupid as to fly to Earth. <laughs> And try to do anything. Don't do that. <laughs> yeah. You know. Mm -hmm. um, I'm sorry. Let me write that down again. What did you say? <laughs> not to do? Exactly not to do? Yeah. Don't go to Earth with Earth. the ships that we're developing mm -hmm. that the one looked out the window. <laughs> oh, yeah. Do the thing being well, gassed up, that's yours. Yeah. But don't do yeah, exactly. that. <laughs> The one that's being armed, gassed, and rolling out right now for you to get into, don't, don't, don't do it. Mm -hmm. Oh, don't. <laughs> um, but no, one of the things they established like really early on in the OVA is that New Edwards is off in the middle of nowhere. New Eden is like the, you know, the armpit of the, 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 uh, of, uh, you know, the, the, 
uh, Earth Federation, whatever they call it. Um, um, uh, Spacey. UN Spacey. Well, UN Spacey is the organization. I wonder what they call oh, the actual right. like known space. I, I don't know. Anyway, mm. um, the idea is you know, New Eden's out in the middle of nowhere. Like, this isn't an important strategic resource, right? If New Edwards Air Force, you know, if, if AI fighters come in, the New Edwards Air Force Base is getting shut down. You're absolutely right. right. It's this idea that no, like this is this is very much his baby. Um, yeah, I, I think you're absolutely right on that. Um, and of course the music, music's pretty good. Oh, yes, it's it's fair to men. Yeah, <laughs> it right. was only somewhat touching and, and amazing. Oh. Yeah, basically, basically, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you know, I didn't I didn't go online and and link myself to edit, to any version of any of those songs oh no and i have no i have no 12 dozen iterations of any of those songs now absolutely not not no 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 no, 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 definitely not not. um yoko kano Yoko Kano is not a goddess she's not a goddess of music no 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 No, simply as a muse yes the first words of my dream i can clearly see Planet Eden, high beyond the skies. I, I'll sing the whole thing for you all. <laughs> like, I memorized <laughs> that song. Like, that's how much this just yeah. sank into my soul. It's amazing. Um, <laughs> um, Future Boy asked an interesting question as we're, we're rolling down. Do you prefer Macross or Robotech-style storytelling? And that's an interesting point, given that Robotech is obviously sort of was you know, using Macross elements for its yeah. story. So, so what's interesting for me mm-hmm. is I saw Robotech first. Yeah, me too. Yeah, and and yeah. I was very confused by Macross. Like I thought I was watching the same thing, <laughs> yeah. and, and I was just like, "Wait a minute, hang on here." Um, I think I like the the Macross storytelling a little bit better. Hmm. Um, I just, you know, no, no real reason for it. It's just more cohesive, I, I, mm. I think, you know, and also if you really want the big, the big ass space opera, mm. that's, that's, you know, the direction yeah. you want to go in. Yeah. Robotech had some interesting, to me, some interesting, um, obviously some interesting, you know, designs and thoughts and stuff like that. But I, I just bought into across a little bit more. Fair. John, how about you? I, I can't ever give up that that slice of my youthful brain that saw Robotech <laughs> and just like you know just exploded like oh this is amazing. <laughs> um, I've gone back and I've watched Macross and obviously in our discussion tonight things are sort of blending together yeah. somewhere <laughs> in the back there. Yeah. It's like I'm not yeah. entirely sure what what said and which one. Mm-hmm. Um, I really enjoyed going back and seeing the original Macross to understand where mm-hmm. Robotech's feet mm-hmm. were planted. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I, you know, I think Carl Majek did a fine job, even though he amalgamed, you know, sure. two other series into it, it with, you know, bits and pieces that just generally don't make much sense, mm-hmm. but for the time period and what yeah. else was available, mm-hmm. you could overlook those like, drastic gaps in like logic <laughs> yeah <laughs> and just enjoy the fact that there was nothing else like it mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. so yeah. you know going back having the ability you know it's another yeah. uh, element to it, the ability to go back and watch original macros and i still you know the years have gone by and mm-hmm. it is that youthful piece of my mind i don't want to watch southern cross oh okay. i don't i don't want to watch genesis climber mm-hmm. not because i don't think that they're they're probably good, mm-hmm. but I would be I would I would be so disappointed if they were terrible. And I was like, oh, so my better my better opinion of them was as part of Robotech. I feel like that. that'd be terrible. Well, I mean, um, oh, go ahead, sorry. No, but but that's I I like them both separately for the things that they do and mm-hmm. how they were done. Mm-hmm. So yeah. I can't I can't give you I cannot go back and erase the the youthful person <laughs> that saw this and was blindingly crazy mad in love with Robotech Mm -hmm. and I can't go back and take away the going and watching Macross Mm -hmm. and understanding more of what I'm seeing and understanding deeper the story that's happening yeah sorry yeah there's no you got a point John there's a there's a romance to Robotech yeah yeah it's charming yeah 
in its own yeah. way. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm totally with you. Like I, um, I look back on Robotech with great fondness. Um, it was just, it's, it's a great ride. Um, it also has one of my favorite line readings, um, in all of anime, um, uh, which is oddly from the East Middle <clears throat> Saga. Um, just a great line, perfectly delivered, perfectly set right in the middle of things. Um, and uh, like it, it makes me weepy every time I think about it. Um, and I think they did a really good, as you point out, I think they did a really fine job. There's a moment, there's a, a moment on one of the DVDs where uh, Carl Majek is remembering the process of bringing um, it over. And he says that, oh, um, whoever was the head of Harmony Gold at the time, um, he brought everyone together for sort of a, a, a meeting when they were first starting the process of you know, writing and dubbing uh, uh, Robotech. And he said, we have the unique opportunity to make a TV story in which the audience's expectations are never disappointed. You know, whatever we tell them is going to happen in the next episode, whatever we, whatever amazing thing we promise will actually happen. And we can actually say, stay tuned for the shocking events in the next episode. And they will legitimately shock people. <laughs> <laughs> um, and that was very much that feeling that, that Robotech and we was. we stayed yeah, tuned. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Robotech had that feel. Um, so, uh, uh, yeah, I, I have, have great charm for that. Obviously, Macross um, is amazing for what it pioneered in the time. Yeah. Um, and for th that uh, attempt at more sophisticated, more serious storytelling. So yeah, I'm, I'm in just different camps, I think, different camps. Yeah. yeah. And for what it's worth, uh, the director of Southern Cross, according to Maycheck, um, reached out to Harmony Gold and said, thank you for rescuing my baby from obscurity. Um, yeah. Southern Cross did not do well uh, in Japan because it took so long for the story to actually go. Um, yeah. And he was afraid it would just kind of uh, uh, disappear, and he was so glad to see it find this new life in Robotech. So, uh, uh, you know, there was, there was definitely some some appreciation uh, uh, that. Um, Do you remember Love the movie? Does uh, is not a Robotech story. Do you remember Love is purely Macross. It never got incorporated yeah. into any of the Robotech storylines. Yeah. Um, but um, yeah, absolutely. And uh, a complete a complete gift to the Macross fan. Yeah. Because if you Ooh. don't if you're if you don't know Macross, do you remember Love is still entertaining, mm -hmm. but it's difficult to kind of lock yeah. it in like where did this thing come from? Mm -hmm. What is this all about? Because it does not really address any of the core this is this is how we got to this moment in time. Yeah. This exactly. is how this battle is shaping <laughs> yeah. up. It is just a complete like Yep. Hug and kiss, and here you go, yep. to Macross fans. Be like, we've we've done the thing <laughs> to the nth degree, yeah. so you can have the detail and anything that you want. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, thank you. I love that in universe. <laughs> that, that do you remember? Love is an actual movie in the Macross universe. Um, it is the official compilation story in the Macross universe of what happened during the Macross saga and the Macross war. <laughs> uh, you know, <laughs> like that's how they were able to kind of make sense of why the storylines are because it's just a movie yeah. they just condensed all the actual storyline into this movie and that's what you're seeing here it's like okay fair enough you know? <laughs> oh so weird um yes this is macross plus we were talking about the oba uh there is a movie edition of macross plus um if you ever see that um it is condensed but with more footage added um i've seen some of the footage um it, um some of it adds Frankly, some some bloody, gory sequences to it. So some of the violence mm. is ramped up. Mm. Um, other than that, I'm not familiar with with anything else in it. Um, the OBA, I'm very happy with. So I never felt like, oh, I want to go back and see that one. Um, but there's a movie version. If anyone, if anyone's curious. Um, and yeah, that is Macross Plus. Anything else you guys wanted to to mention? It was so nice going back to it. Yeah. Absolutely, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed mm -hmm. it. Yes. Yeah. It was nice, uh, nice, <clears throat> nicely done. Yes, yes. <laughs> well done, everyone. Yes, well done. Well done. Well done. Well done. Um, and from what I've heard, I don't know how true this is, um, but apparently the staff at Sunrise approached the staff of Macross Plus when they were finishing up and, uh, and said, we're so impressed by this. Um, 
here's a blank check, basically. Would you like to make an anime here? We, we will bring you on to make whatever anime you want to. Like, we, we just want you on staff to make something. What would you like to make? Uh, Kaomori was uninterested, but a bunch of the staff of Macross Plus went to Sunrise, where they made Cowboy Bebop. Oh, baby. Apparently, that was the outcome of Macross Plus. Oh, yep. thank you, Macross <laughs> Plus. Exactly. A little OVA that gave so much. <laughs> Yeah, uh, yeah. I don't. I don't know all the details. I don't know how true that is. It's a, a, a rumor I've heard, but apparently, that's where that came from. So, anyway, that is that for Macross Plus. We're gonna take a quick break. Come back and talk about some anime news, and uh, we'll be back in just a moment. <laughs> 